Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. My name is Giovanni Caligaris. I'm from Paraguay. I did a localization for the indigenous language of Paraguay, uh, which is called Guarani. This is fancy. Um, so, some stats I have here. 40% uh, of Paraguayans only speak uh, Guarani. That means they actually speak more Guarani than Spanish, and we are a Hispanic country. Uh, also, because of that, 90% of Paraguayans are bilingual, and just in the past 20 years, the, the government just created a, a new grammar for the, for the language, even though the, the language has been around for 700 years, and it's, be, it's been accepted. It became uh, the second language of the country in 1960, 61, 62, something like that. Um, so, I'm gonna give you a quick background, my, my own background. Uh, I was raised in the States in Canada. I was there for 15 years. I decided I wanted to move back to Paraguay, but if I was gonna move back, I wanted to do something I like. So I moved back last year in October. Uh, in November, I already got in touch with um, TDF, and they approved me to do the, the um, localization. When I started, I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I don't speak Guarani uh, at all. I know how to read and write, that's it. So. Uh, I decided I wanted to do the, the, the translation for the GUI, and today, uh, LibreOffice in Guarani, it's the first professional software in the world in an indigenous language. Um, there are other softwares in other indigenous language, but they're not professional. They're very small softwares, like small educational language um, programs and stuff like that, applications. Uh, so. The implementation that I'm working hard to do this in Paraguay is uh, I will, I've been talking a lot with the uh, Ministry of Education, which is not very easy. Um, they love the idea, but that's about it. They don't, they're having a hard time pushing it. But I told them that, I mean, I've been working on with them, that to, uh, to, to take the software, Libre Guarani or Libre Office and Guarani, to the, um, I don't know how you say it in English. In, in Spanish, you, want to, uh, you say campaña. In the, um, uh, ¿cómo se dice un campo? In the, Interior. In the, in in the, the small the, villages outside the city. Okay? Towns and villages. Huh? Towns and villages. Um, because outside the city, they speak more Guarani than they actually speak Spanish. So, one issue that the country has is, um, we are not very tech savvy. So for them, like I mentioned before, if 40% of Paraguayans only speak Guarani, uh, they can finally start working in a language that is theirs because you can have the program that does everything you like, but if it's not in your language, it's, it's useless, right? Um, so because of that, I've been, I've been talking to some other schools um, and we're trying to create some new instructors for the for LibreOffice, so they can use it. Even though there are Microsoft uh, Office users, but uh, just to adjust them to the um, to the interface, and it's it's a nice cost reduction for the country, because we have as well like Vietnam, a big piracy issue. Um, and this is something I'm not really doing, but something that already happened. The Paraguayan government has somewhat adopted. Uh, ODF, um, but they offer on the website uh, Microsoft Office uh, formats and ODF. So you choose which one you want to download or use it. So what impact does LibreOffice and Guarani has? Uh, like I said, it's just a grammar that has been created not too long ago. And there's a lot of issues, people deciding what, what's right, what's wrong, all this and that, but nobody gets it together. To do it. So, uh, with that, it gives me the liberty to <coughs> modernize the language because um, Guarani is a language that borrows a lot from Spanish and English, right? So, because of that, I, I'm the first one uh, in, in Paraguay or, uh, as, a, or as a Guarani uh, user that I can actually uh, integrate it with technology. Either basic, because you know how Calc has like 
um, stuff for economics, statistics, and stuff like that, right? So, again, LibreOffice becomes the first one in the world to have something like this uh, for an indigenous language. Uh, also, the, the impact that it could have is a new labor tool, like I mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of people that speak the language, but they, don't, they can't work with it, right? So with this, is a new form for them, so to start getting educated. It's also a door for other softwares in, in, in Guarani or indigenous language. I've been talking to a guy in uh, Bolivia. Um, he was so excited to see that I did this. He decided to do um, the other indigenous language in, in Bolivia itself. He already started. He was so motivated by it. I don't know how far he's got, but he really liked it. Uh, same thing, and like I mentioned before, it is a, 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 a fight against piracy, a big issue we have in the country. Uh, we're trying to cut down. So, when I come back, I still have a few presentations to do. This is, I guess, I don't know if it's really pointless or not. But Kaku Pe Paraguay, um, there's a, a, a non-profit foundation called Paraguay Educa, Paraguay, uh, Educate Paraguay, um, and they were so motivated by the work I've done they implemented already in 5,000 computers I have in, this, in the small studio of Kakupe. So when I come back, I have a presentation to do it with them um, and explain it why. And, and they say they also want to, they would like to contribute back to the translation. Obera Misiones, Argentina. That's in the north of Argentina. <clears throat> uh, Guarani is also spoken outside of Paraguay. It's actually spoken by 10 million people, which is a lot. <laughs> Um, and the North Argentina, they also speak it. So they invited me to go there um, to show them because in Misiones, they just the past few years, they uh, accepted Guarani as a official language of the province, right? And again, back, I will be going back to the Universidad Nacional de Asunción, the National University of Asunción, uh, where I was there with Oliver not too long ago. Um, they say they, they already use LibreOffice in in the school, and they say they want to start distributing uh, LibreOffice, both languages. So most likely they're just, we're going to make a small package for the students. So going back to Paraguay Luca, um, to me it's very important because um, they are um, <clears throat> trying to get a lot of the, the, the kids from the, the, the small villages to start using open source. Um, and from that, they adopting uh, Libre Guarani, right? They're actually doing the one laptop per child. I don't really like that project that much, but it's working for them. They have close ties with the Ministry of Education, um, and that's good. It's very good because, like I mentioned, the Ministry of Education is very hard to deal with. So at least I can have some sort of um, uh, influence with them so, so, so we can start making a change. And like I mentioned, uh, Paraguay Duca, it's open source. So they're working in open source. A quick conclusion. My presentation is actually almost done. <laughs> uh, what's the main goal that I, I wanted to do for LibreOffice in Guarani? Um, we have a big issue with education. The country only spends 3% of the budget in education, which is very low. Um, so, with this, it's, it becomes a resource for a better education. You all know that uh, today, if you want to have a job, the minimum you got to know is how to use Office. Read, write, and, list, and use Office. Those are the minimum. So, with that, I think we can start uh, developing uh, the people in Paraguay much better. Um, with that, um, start positioning Paraguay at the same level as other more developed countries. Countries like Uruguay, which is not too far from Paraguay, they became uh, totally open source. Same with Chile. And they see the potential of it. And they have adopted LibreOffice. I don't know if they, I don't know if LibreOffice actually knows this. And I guess this is going back. It's preparing um, the Paraguayan users for the workforce. Because, like, as I mentioned, Office is a, a very important tool to um, have it today. I mean, that's a must requirement. And that's it. Thank you. Questions? So I have a 
simple question. Um, is the Guarani that is spoken or and written in Paraguay much different of the Argentina and Bolivian? No, they since we create or since Paraguay created that um, grammar and alphabet, which is just borrowed from Spanish, um, they're using the same. They're using so the same thing. The work that is done for Paraguayans will also be Effect. effective for yep, other exactly. countries. I forgot to mention in the previous slide, um, I don't speak uh, Guarani. So what I did was I moved back in October and I had some cash that I saved to move, you know. So I spent the money from my own pocket with a professor. Well, he's not a professor, he's a speaker, uh, which I paid him every day, every week. We sit down every day for eight hours and I will come back home and I will work another eight hours again from home. Um, that's how we have. That's what we did. Liberty office in Guarani. Um, we had a, a nice team because he can speak it, but he can't read and write. And I can read and write in Guarani. <laughs> so I guess we joined powers and in, in that way. Um, and it's working out pretty good. Uh, I still we still have to do some fixing because some of the stuff we translated has never been translated before. So we have to go back and adjust it. Um, that's kind of my my work I'm doing right now. Um, it's not easy. I'm slowly learning now, <laughs> but it's a very hard language to speak. It. Um, any other questions? Do you have users in Paraguay? Users, yeah. LibreOffice users. Yeah. We do have very small. Yeah, small. Very small. The University of Asuncion uses uh, LibreOffice in school. Also, there's a big uh, newspaper called ABC. Um, they use LibreOffice. I don't know to what extent. There are a few companies that are using it, but I don't, I don't think they s see the same value that LibreOffice has. And that's why I'm, when I go back, that's something I want to work on it too. I've just been doing some research lately since I was here. So basically what we have in those kind of countries is that LibreOffice is facing a fierce competition of pirated Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. The same thing is similar. Where is the guy? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not about that it's free. It's about um, uh, choosing the right product, right? Because I can get, anyone can get Microsoft Office for free. That's not that's not the fight, it's about showing them what's right, right? Um, and that's, that's something that's slowly developing. It's, it's still a fight to go, but. So the whole point is all about how do we communicate the right thing to people? Because they can do wrong things, Yeah. that is their purview, but what we can do is to you know put it in the right way, we can put right things to the people. And that's, that's how we can increase the user base. Well, I have, um, uh, not too long ago on the Perry Ryan newspaper, sorry, uh, <coughs> news, news TV, he was, he's an active um, open source guy, and he was explaining on TV, which I thought was very interesting. Um, he said that, sure, you can get all the closed programs for free, but, I mean, you forget, I mean, a lot of those programs, they pay a lot of money for security. See, so they're cracking it. They're putting some malware inside. So eventually, your computer will have a virus. Why would you want to do that? Why don't you get the alternative? And it's clean, you know? It's very clean. You don't have to deal with it. And I guess a lot of people started thinking about that. And I thought that was very interesting when he mentioned it. By the way, okay, just go ahead. Well, that's an interesting way to market, to market open source. Yeah. Buy a cracked. Uh, uh, closed source uh, software and get the virus. Yeah, <laughs> he even said that to the lady on TV. He's like, she's like, he he asked her, he's like, do you have a virus in your computer? She said, yeah. And he's like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm curious. We have uh, people here in the other countries. Uh, in Brazil, we have many sites that offer bibliography. They compile the, the, the software and they distribute the software. But 
in the software they put the malware. Yeah, they do put malware. And do you have a problem in your countries with that? Because in Brazil, I always receive a message uh, with people complaining, oh, I have a virus in my computer because LibreOffice uh, <laughs> put virus in my computer. And uh, I have to ask, where did you do the download? Yeah. And oh. cite to you, whatever. No, you have to download the official site. Do you have the same problem in your countries? Uh, uh, we don't have a problem with LibreOffice, but we had some problem with other uh, open source software. Mm -hmm. GIMP had that issue. Sorry? GIMP. They had no, that no, issue. Okay. Um, the input, keyboard. Oh, keyboard. It's keyboard input. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from such a ship in Estonia. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.